Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I am Mohammed Al Ghazi. This is a series of uh, recordings about the subject of syntax. Today's lecture is about syntactic categories. We will see how they are defined and what are their defining criteria. Concerning the definition of syntactic categories, we know that in human languages, words can be classified into syntactic categories, among other kinds of classifications, which are also called lexical categories, word classes, or parts of speech. These are just variations in terminology, so don't be confused if you encounter one of these terms in the books of grammar and the books of syntax. So what is a syntactic category? What does it mean? It is a set of words and or phrases in a language which share a significant number of common characteristics. Conventionally, the classification of words into syntactic categories is based on three main criteria. These criteria are semantic criteria, morphological criteria, and syntactic criteria. The first one, which is the semantic criterion, it means the type of meaning the words express. For example, some words express actions, like verbs. Other words describe the actions of the verbs. That's why they are called adverbs. There are some other words which are used to refer to things. And there are other words which are used to describe the things. The second criterion is the words morphological characteristics, meaning the type of derivational and or inflectional morphemes it can be associated with, shortly the affixes it takes, because the type of affixes which are associated with the word can determine the kind of category it belongs to. For example, an adjective, when it is associated with an ly at the end, it becomes an adverb. And finally, the words syntactic or distribution properties. Let's elaborate a little bit, a little bit more on this uh, criteria. Uh, the syntactic or distributional properties of words mean the type of structures in which the word occurs, or else the set of positions in which it occurs in a syntactic structure. By and large, the distribution or the syntactic positions of a category is determined by the two main constraints. By the word constraint here, we roughly mean restrictions. The symbol you see in front of you doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, it's not like equal, it's not uh, an exact equal, it's just, it's roughly equal, the restrictions. In every you see, it means roughly. The intrinsic properties of the category itself, for example, whether the word is a noun or an adverb or a verb. If it is a verb, whether it is a transitive or intransitive. So if the word is a noun, it has a different distribution from a verb. And if a verb is transitive or intransitive, it, has also, it also occurs in different structures. The rules imposed by the environment in which, this is the second criteria which uh, restricts the distribution of words in a structure, it is the rules imposed by the environment in which the category occurs. For example, whether a verb occurs after a singular or a plural pronoun, or whether a noun occurs in a subject or an object position. This position surely affects the type of case it is assigned to the noun. Uh, or pronoun. Uh, for example, a subject pronoun occurs all the time in a subject position. An object pronoun occurs all the time in an object position. And they are not allowed to change their positions according to the rules of the language. Uh, now we move to the classification and the inventory of these categories. 
So on the basis of their semantic, morphological, and distributional properties, the syntactic categories can be classified into three main grammatical classes. The first class of those that we call lexical categories, the second class of those which are called functional categories, and the third class of those which are called inflectional categories. We are going to consider each of these classes in and the type of syntactic categories they include. So let's take the first one, which is lexical, the class of lexical categories. This class comprises syntactic categories such as nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. These categories are called lexical because they have a lexical meaning. They convey a semantic content by themselves. If you go to the dictionary, you will find the meaning of verbs and nouns, adjectives, and adverbs. This class is also called an open class. Why? Because new items can be added to this class over the time. Because the human language is has the property of creativity. This means that the users of a language can always create and add new nouns, new verbs, new adjectives, new adverbs to the lexicon of the language. Now, the second class is called the class of functional categories. This class comprises syntactic categories such as determiners, which means articles, for example, auxiliaries, pronouns, prepositions, negative markers, and so on. These categories are called functional because they fulfill a grammatical function in the sentence. They have no semantic, but a grammatical, primarily a grammatical function, especially they link between the parts of a sentence. They are also described as a closed class because they comprise a small number of words and new items are never or very rarely added to this class. You, 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 you never hear, for example, in English that a new preposition is added or a new uh, auxiliary or a new uh, negative marker. Those that we know many uh, years before still exist, still persist. The class is closed. It doesn't allow the addition of new items to it. In other words, it is very unlikely to hear about new determiners, new pronouns, new propositions, or new contexts added to uh, the language. The third class is called the class of inflectional categories. This is a very recent classification, very recent class. This class comprises syntactic categories such as tense, aspect, mood, person, number, gender, etc. These categories are called inflection. Why? Because they are bound morphemes which change the form of the words by inflection. And I emphasis, emphasize on the, 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 the expression, they change the form of words, but not the meaning by inflection. Like function categories, they also have a grammatical function and they are also described as closed classes for the same reason. No new items or new, uh, 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 yes, new items can be added to them. But the difference between the two is that function categories are free morphemes, whereas inflection categories are bound morphemes. Prepositions, okay, conjunctions, negative markers are free morphemes, whereas tenses, aspect, mood, person, member, gender, these are inflectional categories. In the following lecture, we will give more details about the first type of syntactic categories, which is called lexical category. So thank you very much and see you then.